Welcome to the Art of Money podcast with Art McPherson. And this is the Art of Money podcast with Art McPherson and Luke McCarty, artofmoneyradio.com. For more information on the McPherson Financial Group or to schedule that initial complimentary consultation. We appreciate you listening. Now, let's get to the show. Art McPherson, me and Luke were talking about this last week that Halloween candy is more expensive now. I think each bag's up to about 15%. And now that we've officially flipped the calendar into November, and now we're thinking about Thanksgiving coming up, the average price of a turkey has gone from a buck fifteen a pound to now prepare to pay upwards of two dollars a pound for turkey this year. Is this all just inflation, just nonstop? Biden inflation. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a lot of inflation. Um, you know, there was concerns of that last year, right? You couldn't find a turkey potentially. You right. did. But yeah, this year's gonna be up in price probably astronomically now. Luckily, I'm going to my sister's house in North Carolina, but unluckily, my flights are more expensive to get there. Mm -hmm. Everything is. You know, that's a great place to start this weekend here on The Art of Money with Art McPherson. Luke McCarty is here. 321-425-8550, artofmoneyradio.com. And when you talk to the clients, you talk to the community of the Space Coast, I know you hear from people that are saying, Art, I don't even want to open my statements because I'm almost anxious of what's happened to my 401k, how much of a hit that it's taken over the past year. How are you helping your clients across the community who are, you know, for lack of a better word, just terrified of what their (laughs) accounts look like right now? Well, there's nothing giving the market much direction. You know, we had a good week last week, thank goodness. But one of the things that Luke and I try to do is protect that downside risk. So we've already had a horrible year in the Fed when every time they got up and had a, a meeting and they just talk about raising rates again and changing their guidance to more you know, raises and the market's already priced in kind of where they are currently. And then they just raise it again and then they've raised it again and they've changed their guidance. So every time they change guidance, it really makes the market hit hard. So one of the things we employed this year, everything that you normally do from an asset allocation standpoint for investments was not working this year. All of the things that worked for us in the past didn't work this year. So we employed some hedging strategies and just basically said, well, if the market goes down another 20, 25%, we want to make sure our clients are okay and they don't get affected like that. So we did some hedging strategies, things that we haven't done before because we're protecting against the craziness. It is just one of those years where it has been a crazy, crazy market year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And back to your original comment, Mark, about not checking your statements, you know, that, that can work if you're young and you're in a 401k, right? Just keep buying, you know, buy the dips, ride the waves. But if you're within five years of retirement or in retirement, that doesn't necessarily work. And just as Art mentioned, you know, the typical portfolio allocation for this year doesn't work. That's why the 401k on average is down 25%, right? A 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio is down 20%. So there's a lot of changes this year that need to be made. So even though you don't want to look at your statements because they're down, now's a good time to say, what can I do differently? This is not working. And I know we've said it before here, the McPherson Financial Group, I don't have that crystal ball, but we can with some certainty say it's not going to get 100% better just when we flip the calendar to 2023. There's still work to be done. So 321 425 8550, always online, ourmoneyradio.com. And if you're nervous about the market and have parked some cash on the side, well, don't feel bad, you're not alone. There was a survey from the Bank of America that said their customers are holding more cash than they've seen in over 20 years. So, Art McPherson, Luke McCarty, where is that cash and what kind of rate are you getting for it? But are there opportunities for people who want the safety and liquidity of cash but want a better rate than the bank? Yeah. So basically when they say cash, it's usually like a money market fund. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a little bit of interest, you know, like 1%, something like that. However, you're not losing, right? So what a lot of people are afraid of right now is putting their money in and you throw good money in after bad, right? You don't want to do that. So you're already down 20, 25%. Why should I put more money in right now? Even though statistically it says right now is probably one of the best times to do it. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to do that. So one of the things that we have done to help avoid that problem and a lot of things that people will do you'll react emotionally so a lot of times people will go to cash take their money out of the market sit in cash for a while but then they have to be right twice they have to be right when to get out and then they have to be right when to get back in and try to get back in before the big run-up starts a lot of times if you miss that first week of a run-up you might miss five six seven percent of the bounce so it mitigates your return so the magic is trying to be in a model that doesn't really get you out of the market, but helps protect the downside. And that's what Luke and I have done with our models here at McPherson Financial Group. 
Yeah. And with, with a lot of that cash, you know, we have a lot of conservative clients. You know, we have some people who came to us recently with cash or with a 401k rollover that was down for the year and rolled over as cash. And, you know, some opportunities now, and I've mentioned this the past couple of weeks, but it seems like the rates keep going up. You know, I did a, a three year fixed product for a client a week ago, paying 4.85% per year. So if you're thinking about cash, money market, CDs, you know, you can get a, around 4.8% for three years, you know, 4.1% for two years. Now you do lose the liquidity, so it's not sitting in a money market where you can grab it tomorrow, mm -hmm. but maybe you don't need all that cash on the sidelines. And, you know, in the fours as a safe, super safe rate of return, that's really good. We haven't seen that in a long time. You know, gentlemen, most adults think that they're going to need at least $1.2 million to retire. Now, that's 20% increase from this time last year. And they also found in this survey that 30% of adults don't even think about outliving their savings. So what's the bigger issue here in this story? Finding that ideal amount to retire or making sure you don't outlive your money. I think it's a blend of both. I think to give you the ability and the confidence to retire, you're going to need to know you know, in that scenario, what does $1.2 million provide for me and my family? You know, if you add in Social Security, right, let's make up a number, right, thirty or 40000 you take income off of $1.2 million, you know, you're looking kind of around the $100,000 range before tax, right? And then if you didn't do the correct tax planning, now you may be netting, you know, $65,000, $70,000, but you have $1.2 million in Social Security. So it just depends what your debt is how much cash flow you need. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're used to making a couple hundred thousand dollars, maybe 60 to 70,000 doesn't seem like enough. So it just depends what you're used to, what your lifestyle is and kind of what your debt is. Yeah, one of the things that Luke and I will do, Mark, for people when they have a tough time knowing the number is we'll take their gross income, you know, that's your annual income, which you pay tax on every year, but then we also take their net income. You know, what are they actually living on? So after all the deductions, after the 401k contributions, after everything comes out of that paycheck, what do you actually see that gets deposited in your bank account? And that's kind of your budget money. So typically what we'll try to do is develop a program for our clients that has at least what they're used to take home today is uh, in retirement and try to usually give them about 20 to 25 percent more than that for their travel budget because typically that first 10 years or the heavy travel years that's where they tend to need more cash flow and then after that first 10 years it tends to back off uh, and then they can live in that budget and then we also have to factor in inflation over that period so we put inflation in it we put taxes in it we make sure all that stuff is calculated but we try to start kind of what their take-home net income is and build a program from there you know the story said that most adults think their need they'll need at least 1.2 million to retire but the reality is our mcpherson every single plan is different that's just a number from that story it's just all different for every person right absolutely because you know if you take the median income of the country right now it's about fifty five thousand dollars per person mm -hmm. you know for median income right now that means if you're living together you're living on about one hundred and ten thousand dollars well that's not what you see though typically you see about 60 65 percent of that so you got about 75 you know somewhere between 65 75 thousand dollars to take home well that's your budget you know that works usually unless you're overspending at that level uh, but if that budget works for you and you're paying your mortgage you're doing all your bills typically that'll work for you also in retirement however usually what we want to do is plan some strategies that hey we have that house paid off now you've got that extra two thousand dollars a month for travel expenses things like that so you know there's some planning that goes into depends on what stage you're in if you're in the mid 40s mid 50s it's different than if you're in the mid 40s and if you're in the retirement red zone which luke talked about 60 to 65 range where you're really planning for okay i'm going to retire on x date uh, then that's a different conversation too but it's just really planning out um, that income what those expenses are and like luke mentioned making sure you've got those things paid off that can be paid off 321-425-8550 coming up on wednesday night the cmas and our buddy jason aldean he's up for an award if i didn't This duet with Carrie Underwood is nominated for Musical Event of the Year. It would be easy not to miss you. Wonder about who's 
By the way, did you get his new album? What is musical event of the year? I guess that's another way of saying collaboration. Interesting. I've been to the CMAs two times, yeah. and they're a lot of fun, and it's really cool. When you went, did you remember who won the musical event of the year? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember the title. That's why I was questioning you on it. I, um, but they used to say, like, the great duo, yeah. you know, or... Exactly. Right. I, I don't know what that means. So I guess it's the wordsmithing, or we're changing the words, I guess. Maybe the CMAs but, uh, are trying to own different categories instead of everything sounding the same. Maybe. I no, I'm not going to right. Your guess is as good as mine. Look, the reason we're playing that song, which is up for musical event of the year, whatever that is, Jason Aldean has been playing music for almost 25 years now, and we actually had a chance to sit down with him and talk about his life and his career, and he admitted that he almost gave up on music before a record label signed him back in 2005. I had uh, tons of people tell me no, and, you know, wouldn't sign me but it only took one to say yes and then all of a sudden everything else happens you know so it's really easy to get discouraged and kind of sometimes just feel like you're banging your head against the wall but eventually I'm a firm believer in things happen the way they're supposed to happen and if it's meant to be it's going to happen but you also got to go out and you know not sit back and wait for it to happen you got to go do your part and, and try and make it happen you know Luke McCarty Jason Aldean says something really profound right there about making it happen and do you deal with that with like a lot of clients who set the appointment but don't come in they get nervous they get get intimidated for some other reason. They just don't make it happen. Tell me about the importance of making that first appointment happen. We do. And we, we've had that happen. We've also had it where, you know, it wasn't the right timing for the client for whatever reason. And a year or so later, they come back. You know, there's there's sometimes where, you know, you as a listener, you may be scared. You may not be opening your statements. You may be doing it yourself. And, you know, now may not be the right time to make the move. But maybe six months or 12 months from now, when you're still doing the same thing and still thinking about it, that's when you need to look for advice. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we've had that happen and making that move and making that, you know, that jump, I would call it, you know, to just to ask for help, you know, is super important because, you know, we've, you know, we talk a little bit about our strategies here on the radio. You know, we don't give away the farm. We don't tell you exactly what we're buying and selling and things we're doing, but it's probably different than what you're doing and for different reasons. Yeah. One of the things we try to employ is, you know, when you look at the stock market, it, it can look like a real roller coaster. You know, you've got those peaks and you've got those valleys. You've got that ebbs and the flows. And usually it's based on the economy, economic indicators or the Fed or inflation. You know, something like that is driving or pushing uh, the cart over those cliffs. And then we hit that trough and then it comes back up. And it's just like all over the place. Well, we want to try to make it look like a boring line if possible. We mm -hmm. can't always make it look like a boring straight line. But if you can have a a nice 7% boring straight line, it's a whole lot better than one that does 25%, down 30%, up 13%, down 12%. You know, we want to make it look where it's much more stable than that. So we want to try to take a, as much of the market volatility out of the equation as we can. So what you're saying is sometimes there's nothing wrong with being a little boring. I am. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. 321 425 8550, artofmoneyradio.com. That's how you schedule that complimentary consultation. Art, you were just talking about how the market just goes in cycles and in waves. Let's go back to 1979. Inflation was over 13%, gas was up 50%, and the interest rate was 11.2%. On the cover of Business Week, the headline read The Death of Equities, How Inflation is Destroying the stock market. It was rough, but we got through it. So what is the one thing that you do for your clients to give them confidence that we're going to get through this as well? Well, that sounds like the newspapers today, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So the only thing different is we're at about eight and a half percent inflation instead of 11. It's just this too will pass is what I always say. It's just a period of time that we're in right now and it looks really bad it looks really awful but it's only because right now the current market is set based on current information it's not based on the future it's not based on what happens next year it's based on right now and it's a snapshot of today and all the bad things that are going on today then you add on top of that all the other weird things that are going on right now we have a lot of uncertainty out there just in regular life you know Every time we go to the grocery store, something's up a little bit in price. Every time we go to the gas pump, up, something's up a little bit in price. And then there's a lot of uncertainty in politics. There's a lot of uncertainty in like our government. There's a lot of uncertainty all the way across the board. So it just kind of has that hair on the back of your neck effect mm -hmm. where people are just like, ugh, I don't like this anymore. Can I please avoid some of the craziness? So that's a lot of what we're trying to do here for our clients at McPherson Financial Group. But get rid of the craziness. Don't worry about all the noise that's out there. We've got your money set. 
on a good track for the long haul. Yeah, part of that, you know, setting up of a financial plan is to have different buckets of money. So if you need money today and you were a client, right, we would take it from a bucket of money that hasn't lost value. You know, we wouldn't take it from, you know, the stock market and the volatility that are ups and downs. And of course, this year on the downside, you know, so having that plan where you have different options when you need money is going to help because then you, you know, you don't have to sell Apple stock, right? You don't have to sell Amgen or Microsoft or, you know, you name the stock because you have different buckets of money that we did on purpose at the beginning, knowing that events like this are going to happen. So mm-hmm. I think that that's part of the confidence our clients can see is not only just the plan in place, but when we go through times like this, it's, you know, being there side by side and saying, hey, we understand, you know, medical bills come up, you know, whatever it may be. I think you should take money from this piece. Here's where we're going to send it from. And, you know, looking back to the story of 1979, like I was two years old, so I have no recollection of that. (laughs) But it feels like if you compare that to 2022 and moving into 2023, it feels like everybody's blaming everyone else. It seems like Democrats blame Republicans. Republicans blame Democrats. Nobody's taking ownership of this economy right now. When you're the president and the economy is bad, you get blamed for it. Mm -hmm. When you're the president and the economy is good, you get the rewards of that. So our current president is in the middle of this. Unfortunately for him too, he made it very public on a lot of his policy decisions of what he was doing. And then now because of those decisions, we've got some of the current economic situations now because of that. So like, you know, stopping the oil production and that immediately started raising the price of fuel and things like that. So some of the things he has done politically have not benefited him. And then you add all the other things like the supply chain interruptions, which were out of his control because of COVID and things like that. But there's just a bunch that has gone through this period. So he gets the blame for it because he's the president. When you were traveling, I was talking to Luke McCarty and asked him about the midterm elections that are uh, we're in right now. And how much is that going to affect moving forward our financial portfolios. Do the midterms have that big of an effect? Well, so far, no. You know, the Fed has been the dominating force. So typically, Luke and I, when before the Fed had changed their guidance, were expecting a nice rebound, kind of a run to the end of the year. We've got the Christmas season, the holiday season. You get usually that holiday optimism in the market. And then you have um, the optimism of having a divided government instead of one side controlling all three branches. You have have, you know, a split government. Um, so all of that was the optimism out there. But none of that's played a role this year. It has not um, really affected the market much. It's all been the Fed and it's all been the rising of interest rates that's been dominating the day. Thanks for listening. Want more from Art McPherson of McPherson Financial Group? Find us online at artofmoneyradio.com. We are an independent financial services firm helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of financial and insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. Securities offered through World Equity Group, Inc., member FINRA and SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Investment advisory services offered through ProStatus Group, LLC. McPherson Financial Group and ProStatus Group, LLC are separate entities and are not owned or controlled by World Equity Group, Inc. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Investment financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. Art McPherson is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Please consult with your attorney, accountant, and or tax advisor for advice concerning your particular circumstances. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Arthur McPherson. Florida Insurance License Number A1 74725. Today's show has been a work of art. 